Good morning, wherever in the world you are. It's game three of the, the world champs here in Cape Town. Got the Camilla Warriors taking on the Dhaka Warriors. How's it, Ross? I've been told that this is a bit of a derby. Um, the uh, both teams are plenty of uh, Bangladeshis yep. uh, in both sides. Yeah. Despite the the one the Camilla Warriors from uh, from England. Yep, they play in uh, my Canary Wharf competition. Good bunch of guys made the journey out here. They are staying in Camps Bay, in a lovely villa that overlooks the ocean. And I'm sure they are much happier to be here than in, in London currently where all I see is just pictures of the snow. I just saw the pictures of the Kia Oval and it was uh, covered in white. Yep. So, uh, so uh, definitely... So just waiting for the umpires. A fantastic backdrop of Table Mountain. A beautiful day here in Cape Town. Windy, but the sun's out. Chulani and, and Hannes. The main field umpires make their way onto the field. Fantastic officials. Had a great week so far. Appreciate yes, they have. Uh, there they go, go through. Definitely been uh, on the money. Some uh, some ones a little bit questionable, but uh, you can't forgive them. It's uh, been a long day in the field, so uh, it does look like the, um, the umpires are getting out there now, and we are nearly good to go. It's the Dhaka Warriors. They all have a bat. They are the guys in the black and uh, that turquoise or teal. What would you say, Ross? I'd say light blue. <laughs> <laughs> not uh, color palette. Not your <laughs> not your thing, there, Ross. Uh, not really. Uh, Nonetheless, they are. Uh, I've been impressed by all the kits out here. Really, really good. Uh, the quality and the colors. Uh, it's been uh, love those pink panthers. Yeah. One of my favorite sides. They're a good team. I think they're down to play at 4 o'clock later today on uh, the Gary Kirsten Oval, I believe. So we're just about ready to go here at the Wally Wilson Oval here at West Province Career Club. Game three of the day. Pitch has been pretty good today. It's been a good contest with bat and ball, which is all you want. Okay, Ume is going to be opening the bowling for the mighty Camilla Warriors from London Town. London Town, what a place, what a place. What a place. And they are down here in Cape Town in another fantastic uh, place down here. And it will be, looks like... Uh, Left arm seam, is Or is he just holding the ball yep. in the other hand? Right arm over. Right arm over. Here we go. Starts with a full toss on the legs. Just clipped down to square leg boundary. It's going to get cut off. Great bit of fielding there. Teamwork. Get back for two. It's a nice little gentle start there by the Camilla. Just floating it up. This game is on LMS TV Channel 1. Broadcasting to our international audience. So the batters are Mula and Ayman. Another full toss, just clipped down the leg. That's going to be four runs. You're making it really hard for yourself if you're not using the facilities. No. And uh, Umair Khan, he's uh, just uh, started a little bit loosely here and allowed the likes of. Uh, Mushraf and Ula Aman to get going. That sort of bowling is meat and drink, <laughs> as they would say. If you're walking out and uh, to face the new ball, it's nothing better than uh, getting two gentle full tosses on the pads Absolutely. to get your innings going. Better line of length there by Ume. Mushraf has just 
Guy in that dance, third man for a single. So, Aman just taking guard, having a look at his field, left-hander. So, a big boundary to the, to the leg side. Looks like uh, Omerika and he enjoys bowling uh, to the left-hander a little bit more. He was, uh, that one was a lot uh, straighter and uh, on the cards. So Camilla Warriors a stuffed, tough t start to the tournament. They lost their first game to Ningalese from New Zealand. They'll be looking to go one better here. Try to get themselves a, a last 16 spot for the weekend. Just clip down there to the mid-wicket boundary for a single. And that is the end of the first over. Nine from it. If you're watching this game on either of our social media channels and you're wondering what's going on, this is the Last Man Stands World Champs here in Cape Town, the West Promise Career Club. If you wanted to get involved and give a chance, your, your team a chance to be here next year, you just have to enter on the website. Your local league manager will be in touch with you. You will need to qualify through your local or regional national competition as this is our pinnacle event. Okay, the new bowler is Mozrael Hoke. Right arm over. Who's well bowled. Good start. On the money is uh, Mozrael Hoke. He's uh, started a lot better than his uh, new ball partner. <laughs> we do say that bowlers need to bowl in teams. The great Alan Donald and Sean Pollock did that for years for the Proteas. Just sliding down leg side for wide. Keeper's not happy. It's going to trickle over the boundary for four wides. Never good to give, a, give away extras. Unnecessary extras, should I say. Apparently, I was speaking to one of the cameramen. They're saying that uh, Saturday is going to be extremely windy. With gusts up to 48 kilometers an hour. Is that here? That's not ideal, mate. That's not ideal. Gonna, I feel sorry for you uh, running into the breeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, definitely putting up my hand to go with the with the wind on uh, on that day. Eh? Half out to the peel, trying to distract the umpire from calling a wide. Most umpires are wiser than that these days. Heaved out to extra cover. The man is in sort of in between the position there. He's not stopping one or a boundary. I'm going to be joined in the current commentary box by the man, man, main man, Refat. Heads up our. HQ in Bangladesh. Rifat was the best league manager London has ever seen from 2007 to 2013. But he's gone on to better things now in Bangladesh. Welcome, Rifat. Yeah, thank you, Ross. Thanks for the kind words. Uh, it's, it's not kind, but it's true. Yeah, it's been all, uh, always lovely. So, can you tell us when you get a chance about the Dhaka Warriors? So, Dhaka Warriors is one of the strongest side from Bangladesh. We have six teams from Bangladesh at this World Champs. And they're very... Oh hey, Zampai's given him. Muller is gone. Played a half, half shot there, trying to run it down. He's nicked it. That's, that's a big wicket. So, big wicket of Muller, who was just... He was the batsman of the tournament and the player of the tournament that recently concluded Dhaka Champs. Just which was just held before this tournament, and that's a huge wicket. It's a great catch by Sheehan. Yeah. 
So it's a great, great matchup. So Dhaka is obviously the capital of Bangladesh, and Kumilla is another big city of Bangladesh. So uh, most of these Kumilla warrior boys, although they are from England, I think that most of these boys are originally from Bangladesh. And the bowler Mojarulak Shojib, he he played in LMS Bangladesh for five years, and he was a very regular and a very good player for cricketers Kumilla in the Dhaka League. And now he has moved to UK a few years back, and he's few years back, and now he's joined his mates in London, and they formed this Kumilla Warriors team. So it's sort of a Bangladesh derby, we can say that. Yeah, it's always good. Add a bit of spice to hmm. the game. is always always good fun for both teams. So 19 for one after two overs. Yeah, and we, we have been joined by a few guys already on our live stream. Sam Sharma is joining from Australia. Welcome, Sam. I hope you are doing all right. Uh, yeah, Inza Mamul Hockey is playing for shared trips. So they are on Pinelands now. Uh, you can follow their match on LMS TV 5 on our YouTube channel. But this is the main event for, uh, for now on LMS TV 1. Dhaka Warriors versus Kumila Warriors. Amanullah Aman. It's a great shot there by Man. He's just driven it straight past the bowler 4 4. He looks a class act though, Aman, does, does he? Yeah, he's a wicket, he is the, also the wicket keeper and he's a very, like, if he can stay up until the two, 10 overs, it's not a good news for the Kumila Warriors. They need to get him out quickly. He's a big hitter, he's very aggressive and. And he's been joined by Habibur Rahman, sh nicknamed Shohan. He is another great young prospect for Dhaka Warriors. So Shohan had been, has been he's a young star. He has been playing for Dhaka Warriors for the last few years. He was picked up. He was a, he's a bright young talent in Dhaka. And we can, we can, all, we can see a big future for him. Hopefully he does well in the World Champs and get some recognition as well. Oh, it's well bowled there by Umay Khan. Oh, it looks like he's nipped away. That's a brilliant delivery. Absolutely brilliant. It's really well bowled. Look at that. It's almost too good a ball to Nick, it seems. So how did Dhaka Warriors go on, on, on day one? Day one? So... I think uh, so. Dhaka has played. It's a huge shot. He smashed it over. Long on, long off. Sorry, got into the trees. Unbelievable scenes here. In the main oval, Dolly Wilson. That's an the unbelievable shot, club. as as Ross has just said. Uh, straight over long off, and as classy as it gets. Just look at the back lift, and it's a great oh, shot there. And he held the pose. He's watched it all the way into the trees, sailing away into the wind. This is as good as it gets. That was a great shot from Aman. So Aman already scored a 50 in the first game against BMC Dickard. So oh, that's four. a brilliant shot. He just pierced the gap between extra cover and long off for four more. That didn't look like it was going for four, but boy, oh boy, how it's great heavy. timing. And he has picked the gap so well. Uh, just a gentle push. Elbow high. Uh, just timing, pure timing. Refer Looks like great batsman. I know you. I know you're very objective, hmm. but who out of your out of the six Bangladeshi teams do you have a favourite? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I think Dhaka Warriors definitely one of the, the strong side. You can yeah. see, like this weekend, everyone was struggling so far since the morning, and they are off to a flyer. Thirty-four yeah. four after three overs, and you can see there are some real good swings. The bowler the Seamers are getting some good swing and and I think share trip as well on the first day as you have seen. Yeah. Their bowling attack was absolutely Quality. fantastic and but as you know, like we have discussed some of the guys couldn't come over due to visa issues. For actually Dhaka Warriors is missing their kept captain, Faridin oh, wow. Masood. Uh Farid if you are watching we are missing you and Hope you hope you are here, but I'm sure your spirit is with the team, whole team, and I'm sure he'll be here next time. But 
still without Farid, they have got a very strong side, very strong seven, and they've got a ringer from Cape Town. Yeah. So, uh, they're still a very strong side. Shetri, very strong. Uh, they're also missing a couple of very key players. Um, they've got two ringers. So, there's a strong side. Lila, very good. So, we haven't yet watched Lila in the first field, but they have beat uh, the strong Wolf Pack side from Lahore in the first game with the bonus point. So, that's a strong start. They're playing later in the day against CPA Masters. So, Habibur Rahman Shohan. Oh, swing and a miss there. Oh, Shojib. These two know a lot about each other. They played a lot in the Dhaka League against each other. So, familiar faces and that's the beauty of last man stands. You know, yeah. you, you play in Dhaka in Dhaka League, then you go move o move to other country and play last man stand in that city. Oh, it's well ball there. Oh, that's really great good, bowling by Shajib. Absolutely brilliant. Just he looks like he's uh, got it on a string there, does he? High action. Hmm. Just look from this angle. Oof, beat and Shohan all ends up. There's some lovely bowling by Shajib. Mozara Lok Shajib. Number 69. Shuan needs to be careful here with the swing. Oh, oh that's a lovely shot, shot, but straight to the fielder at cover. Interesting field said Ross is the fielder is about 20 meters of the boundary. I, yeah, I always wonder that he's not stopping one or four. So yeah, I know. I'm, uh, yeah. yeah, he's not stopping a one or if it. Yeah, if maybe what they're trying to do is because it's a big field, they were trying yeah. to stop two. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think so. That's a long boundary over there. So as you've seen in the recently concluded T20 World Cup, when you are playing at the Gaba or one of the bigger grounds like Part, they they have this kind of field setting. Back to the outfielder, the fielders on the boundary were like 15, 20 meters from the boundary. So I think this ground twos are very important. Like you will the teams who get more doubles and threes they're more likely to get do well but you can't always dispatch for four or six and the short boundary on the so the short boundary on the offside for aman now yeah so the leg side is the big boundary and for shohan leg side is the the shorter boundary so you always have to plan around the shorter boundaries. Absolutely. When to bring your spinners. And I think Mirza Faharad Beg. I think we have got the first spinner into attack. Yeah, looks like he's a leggy. Oh, leggy is always good to watch a leggy. Ball into the left hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still not 100% sure by the way he's throwing the ball. It looks yep. like he's a leg spinner. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm right here. That would be interesting. Oh, that's a great delivery. Dots it in. And Amans just clips it off his legs just for a single down to backward square leg. Yeah, I think that will be a great battle with the with versus Aman, you know, long long leg long boundaries in the leg side. And for the right hander, although the leg leg side boundary is a bit short, but he has to hit him against the spin. I think he might try to tempt him with a few Flight of delivery. That's nicely played on the offside. Does it just the single? I think the key here is to run the first one hard and put some pressure on the fielder. Absolutely. I think they could have possibly ran a two there. The fielder was not that quick onto the ball. I think the key here is to run the first one hard to see if there is an opportunity for a double. Oh. Got done on one knee, smacked it out to mid wicket boundary yeah. just for a single. Though. Good shot for one, as they would say. Yeah, he looks elegant though, Ross. But this um, Aman guy, Aman is a proper player. Yeah, stands tall. Absolutely. Looks like he's got uh, great technique and good timing. He'll be used to playing on these sort of wickets. Oh, as well, well, he's kept low. He's nearly stuck under the bat. That's a very good delivery from Mirza Farhad Bey. 
Oh, it's kept very low. It's a good, good first over this by Farzad Baig. Never easy as a leg spinner. Was well bowled. Just rocked back and just punched it out to long off for a single. A good start this by the Dakar Warriors. They move to 40 after five overs. Just the one wicket down. Mohamed Aman, 20 of 11. And Roman, 3 of 7. Current projected score is, is 160. We have been joined by lots of viewers from Taka. Watching these two sides go against each other. As, you, as we have said, lots of players from Bangladesh involved in this game. Two big cities of Bangladesh, Taka and Kumila. Yep. So... Mazarel's going to bowl his third over. Very tidy. He's just gone for 12 in his first two. He's got the big first wicket of of the Dakar Warriors. Yes, Muller was in great form coming into this tournament. He was nominated the batsman of the tournament and the player of the tournament at the recently concluded Dhaka Champs. So that was a huge wicket for Kumila Warriors. That's a great shot there. Third man's too square. Gone for four. Great shot there by Raman. Clever, clever batting that he knew the guy was too square. He just cut it fine. And runs down to the squash courts for a, a welcome boundary. Yeah, that is, that is very well timed on the back foot. Raman just changing his bat. Well, I don't know if that's tactical by... The team manager running on with a quick, with a bit of a message. So, Dakar Warriors off to a great start here. That's a good shot there. Very good shot. It's rocked back and just headed out to deep mid wickets just for a single though. So a man back onto strike. He's currently striking at just about 200, 20 if 11. Yeah, man has been really, has been timing the ball really well. That shot over long off was the shot oh, of the day. Oh, I think it big was, appeal there. I think it was sliding by hook, but no, look, it was going down leg side. Yeah, I think it was sliding down the leg. I think maybe a bit height on that as well. Tulani says I need to do that. No, it's definitely going down the leg. That's a very, very good battle going on against between Mozar al Haq and Amanullah. Two very quality players on show. Oh, that's another great delivery show. Habibur Rahman, quite watchful. It's a very tidy spell of bowling this by Mazarel. Just 17 off his three. Yeah, he has been the pick of the bowler. The so just considered 17 out of 46 in his, his three over. The other opening bowler went for a bit. So if you look at the last 10 balls, the Camillo Warriors have been pretty tidy. A few singles, one boundary, a few leg, a leg by. Deca Warriors going at about eight and over. A man looks like he's taken the, hel the helmets come off and the caps on. Always yeah, prefer seeing batsmen wear helmets, but yeah. sometimes you just can't force it. Yeah, the spin are on now. So, the leggy Fahad bag into his second over. Displayed some quality control. We know leggy's tend to be able to bowl a few bad balls in their spell. Yep. Yeah, th there's the risk you take in T20s. You need you need to take wickets. So the leg is getting wickets. So he bowled a, a very good first over. Just considered four there. It's a big s swat out to. That's a very good shot. Square leg. Oh, oh. great fielding there. Teamwork there, both guys getting around, stopped it on the boundary, pushed That's it to brilliant. his plate. That's brilliant. 
saved two runs there for his side. That's another very good delivery from Mirza Farhad. So Ross, yes, uh, the skipper of Kumila Warriors, he got injured leading up to the tournament. I think he has now recovered. Uh, Sheehan, yep. he's uh, apparently an ACL cricket injury. That's very uh, good running. Um, very good running. And the fielder, he was slow off to the slow of the blocks and should have should have kept it down to one but very good running from the two batsmen in the middle uh, that was the Yorker another very good delivery Mirza Farhad, he has ver very good control. So the Legis, who has the most control, yeah, are the ones. That's flighted, big shot, couple of bounces to the fielder at long off. Aman doesn't look happy with himself. It looked like he wanted to hit that full toss for a boundary. But that is seven overs. What a replay of that. He said it out to long off. Ume has got around well. Got, got his body behind it just to make sure. Yep. As to how you should do it. So 51 for, for one after seven. Dakar Warriors off to a good start. I think the Camilla, War Camilla Warriors will feel that they're definitely in the game. What we do need to do is cannot have the Dakar Warriors having a drinks break after every over. Rifat, will you speak to your countrymen, please? <laughs> <laughs> they are used to heat that was normally twice as hot as this in, in Dakar, I'm sure. Definitely. So there's new over. Just <coughs> Ali Zeb. It's another leg spinner. It's going right on through and around, it seems. Yeah. We see leggy again. He's yeah. flicking but it, it like but a leggy. Grip. It looks like another leggy we have. Another youngster. Oh, good start there. Very yes, no way. Look at the confusion there between the two batters. Oh, that should have been a single. That's poor running. The good old yes, no, wait. I'm sorry, you're out. <laughs> Never one of the worst ways in, in any form of cricket is run out. That should have been a single. No one backing up at the bowler set. Oh, it's a leg. That's a poor delivery. It's four wides. Five wides there. Five wides, yeah. That's a gift for the batsman. And as we know, in this format, those runs go to the batsman score. We really can't have the guys running on for water every single ball. I think there's a change of gaps there. Well ball there by Elizeb. Rahman just pushed it out to extra cover for a single. Whoa! That's a very good delivery of the dead. dead man. Oh, that looks like going for another boundary. That's very unlucky for the bowler. That was a very good delivery. Certainly doesn't deserve to go for a four. Also, Dakar Warriors off to a fly. Uh, it's two boundaries in the over already. 
61 off to 7.3. Alizeb under a bit of pressure here in his first over. It's never good as a bowler or spinner to go to a few boundaries in your first over. It doesn't do your confidence any good. Yeah, still have two, two more to go in this over. It's considered 10 in the first three over, first three balls. Okay. There. That was short. Cuts it down to. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's oh there's a really. misfield there by the by the fieldsman. And they'll yeah. scamper back for two. And then it's bounced over. We have seen Sheehan's a few head. Yeah, a few misfields from him already. In that deep point region. Oh, well, ball there. <laughs> that's yes, a, that's a beautiful delivery. Probably the perfect leg spinner. It's drifted in, landed, spun away from the right hander into the keeper's gloves. Very good comeback. So 63 for one after eight. Deca Warriors on, off to a fly. Uh, projected score currently at 158. Welcome back to the commentary box. Commentary masterclass from Simon Melba's on its way. <laughs> it's taken t to this part of his role as last man stands with absolute ease. A man of many talents. Thanks, Ross. I'd love to see your CV one day. I think there's nothing you can't do. It's a novel, I think. <laughs> Roles and duties, about 55 pages. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fired back. Ooh. Whoa! He's gone so back there. He should be getting forward. I like his action there. It reminds me of uh, Anil Kumble. Quick yep. through the crease. Bit uh, right over the top. See if he can get any rip here. He might prefer more of a Shahid Afridi comparison, mm. but... A little bit off the wrong foot as well there, yeah, Ross. It's always a bit confusing as a batter when you... Arms everywhere, legs everywhere. We used to have this bowler in South Africa called David Pryke. He used to run, run, he was gas, bowling off the wrong foot, and then right handed in swingers. So Nancy Haywood bowled off the wrong foot as well, didn't he? No, he was on off the right foot. Was, oh. Off the correct foot, should we say? Who am I thinking of? Anyway, doesn't matter. I mean, that's very awkward. Although that's short, short but he's picked a out the fielder oh, and he's taken. a great catch by Sajib. He's picked out the fieldsman on the cow corner boundary and that is the end of Mohamed Haba Rahman. He's just starting to find his straps. He's picked out the man on the boundary and a comfortable catch there. And that's the second wicket down for the Dakar Warriors. This is a clash, a local clash we call it, to... Two sets of teams from the same country but different cities. It always adds a bit of spice to a, a derby like this. Of course, Camilla Warriors coming via London though. Via London. Camilla to London. They are all residing in London now. And what leagues they play in LMS London, Ross? They play in Millwall Park, which is uh, the closest landmark would be Canary Wharf. Okay. The financial capital of the United Kingdom. That's where you've got all your money invested, isn't it, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> okay, 64 for two. Look at that backdrop, Ross. Beautiful table mountain. The uh, tablecloth just sat up there all day and enveloping a few of the higher spots. Some beautiful scenes here in the Western Cape. So has Sheehan got the baseball catcher's uh, face guard on there? Looks like he does. Might have to get a quick interview with him after the halfway yeah. stage in his I think apparel. you should wear it. Uh? You should wear it for the <laughs> interview, I think. Might be a bit sweaty, but... <laughs> okay, so, so new man in, Sharifal Islam Sheikh. The Dakar Warriors are sitting nicely here. If they can get up to that projected score of 149, I think that'll be a, a good total. 
Uh, they've got a decent bowling attack. They just don't want to blow themselves out the water here. Go looking too at, hard. Looking over at the, the deck here at West Bronze Cricket Club, is starting to fill up a few teams that have played their games and they're just about to rehydrate with a few of the oh. samples of the local ale or lager, should I say. Of course, we've got uh, some promotions running with Jack Black at the moment. They've been kind enough to give us some discount cards for various restaurants, and there's a bit of uh, some promotional uh, promotions going on at Western Province Cricket Club. So if you're in the area, feel free to pop on down through the week. They've got their ambassadors here on uh, the semi-finals and the the quarter-finals, sorry, and the semi-final and finals day. Well, bold there by Fahad Bake. Good length there. Tough to do anything but push it into the offside for a single. So, nine overs done. The score is 67 for two. We have Aman still there on 32 of 22 not out. And Sheikh, three of two. The projected target has gone down to 149. We just see the, the Jack Black uh, brewing tent down there. A few people be flooding in there soon to... They've got some good specials on there, and uh, we thank them, of course. Uh, they're part of the Heineken group, so thanks to the guys at Heineken for hooking the teams up. The, I've got to hear if you buy a main meal, you get a complimentary drink at a few different restaurants around Cape Town. So thanks to them. As we're back to the cricket action now with Ali Zeb. Went for 12 in his first. Another leg spinner. 12 balls. So, Tossed it up there. Interesting to see the two different styles of leg spin here, Ross. You've got uh, Baig, who is bowling into the wicket, whereas uh, Ali Zeb's a bit more flight and guile. Yep. A bit like yourself with your <laughs> left arm finger spin. <laughs> I'm more of a flight, to, flight and guile. By the way, when I do get it wrong, I do disappear to the... What's... Swats out to square leg. The comeback should come back for two easily there, the... Fielder throwing off his haunches, so not easy to get the power in it. That's a massive shot over. Long on for six into the net. Aman, unbelievable scenes here. Much respect for Ali Zeb's leg spin there. Tossed up and uh, tossed out of here. Look at that. Tossed up and he just went thump. He hit that long over into the nets. The uh, few of the guys have I mean, a little warm up in there, but they need to uh, be careful. Sagami over there, I think. They're playing the last game. And this is the change up there. That was the off spinner. Just opened out the, the palm. Just let the off spinner go there. This, this Amar looks a really good player. He is the wicket keeper. He's 41 of 25. We rock back and punch it into the extra cover region for a single. They're going to push for two. Really good running by the two batters, putting the fieldsmen under pressure. Yeah, fantastic work there and there. Again, Hamar needs to work on his fitness there. He's only been out there 25 balls, but I think this is about his uh, ninth drinks break. But it is a change of 10 overs, so we'll let him off this time. So I've just been down to have a word with the uh, Dakar Warriors captain, and uh, I've put him on notice. <laughs> You've warned him. I said, I won't tell you again. Yeah, there's not drinks break every ball. Yeah, well, every over. Yeah. Mm, so yeah. Anyway, we're just turning around now for the final 10 overs this innings. The guys going to be hitting into the wind now, so they'll probably hopefully be looking to keep it full and probably go wicket to wicket if they've got the good tactics there. But uh, Sheehan just calling the all the players in now. 
And now we've got a third person running drinks out, so we get the umpires on this. Yep. This is a bit of a team talk as well. It seems that the brains trust of the Dakar Warriors having a chat with the two batters that are in. Probably giving them a, a target that they are thinking is going to be competitive. So, uh, Tulani and Hannes uh, pulling the strings now and the, everyone going back into position. So I'm going to be interviewing Nav from the Camilla Warriors. He's um, taken on the the Delhi franchise for the Indian Super Series in March. It'll be interesting to hear his thoughts and views and who he's looking to select. By the sounds of it, he's got some pretty good, a pretty good team lined up. So, he's putting my the London hustle, hustle under pressure as well as the Noida Lightning. But, uh, I'm trying to free up Simon Melbers from his his contract. See if I can get him out there for the London hustle. Should we say negotiations are ongoing? You haven't actually spoken to me yet, yet so the negotiations are yet to open, I think. <laughs> Behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, Ross, I'd love to play, but I think I might be uh, otherwise occupied yep. with uh, various work commitments. It's going to be a cracking tournament. Looking forward to the India Super Series. Of course, if you want to find anything more about that jump on our website on the home page there uh, there should be a, a banner on there for the India Super Series so click on that and you can get some more information we'll be able to find out anything more about Last Man Stands it's lastmanstands.com and there's uh, loads on there so this is the match up here Ross that I'm uh, slightly nervous about for Camilla Warriors You've got the left arm spinner by the looks of things I know off spinner but uh, left-hander with a short boundary. That's well, good start there by Raf Sand. He's one of my umpires in London. Great guy. Word has it he can be a bit trigger happy some games. Likes his LBWs. Well, he's he's an off spinner, so he's probably <laughs> appealed for a few in his time. <laughs> so a man's going to be looking to get to his 50 and then get back in the hut and. Get back in later if he, if he can. That is one of the beauties of last man stands. Once you do retire and everyone else, the seventh wicket falls and come back in. Oh. So good start here by Raf Sand. He's, he's bowled well here. Tax has been good. He's, he's kept it full, which is what he needs to do. Full and outside off. Make the left hand a hit towards the, the longer side. He doesn't want to get too straight and uh, open up that leg side for Aman because he's hit it very clean when he struck it. He's uh, going in a striker at about 170 there off the top of my head. This one's tossed up though and banged hard and straight. It's going to run away for four, I think. Yes, we will down onto Avenue de Mist. Along the avenue, the fielder's got a bit of a hike there to fetch that one. Good looking shot there from a man. Dead straight there. It's like one of your golf shots, Ross. Straight up the fairway. Little stinger. Straight up the fair, but not very far. Mm -hmm. And your shots normally end up in a similar place as that ball there, running along the road. <laughs> 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 yep, it's not uh, far from the truth. So the Dakar Warriors projected score is back out to 160. So just two more runs for Amman's 50. The Dakar Warriors do look a, a strong batting outfit. Oh, uh, Ref Sands just used the crease both bat. Got 50. Raises his bat to his, his fellow countryman, does a man. And a big hug from his mate there as well. So well batted by Aman. And he's going to get his customary photo from Mr. Tulani. I've just photo bombed it in the back here. <laughs> it's 
well better to him. 52 of 29, good knock, just what his team needed. So that's got Dakawas off to a fly here. They got to be thinking, what you think here, Ross? 170 at least. They're hitting into the wind now, so the boundaries might be a little bit harder to come by, but uh, hopefully get 80 in the next nine or so. So 91 for two, for 11. The new man is Tonok Tony, Tonu. Uh, what's your prediction here for final score here, Ross? I'm going to go one, 170. Oh, geez, that's a long hop, that one. It's flipped around the corner. Yeah. It's a pretty easy start there for Tonok. Helped it on its way. It looks like the ball just stuck in the fingers there of Ali Zeb. That's difficult. Leg spins difficult the best of time, but that's n not a great delivery. He bowled so quite nicely in his first over. If you're a batter, it's, not, it's a, probably the best ball you would like to get first up. So of course, if you're watching on Facebook or uh, YouTube, drop us a comment in the comment section or... Give us a like, let us know where you're joining from, or if you've got any comments about the game or anything happening at the LMS World Champs, if you'd like more information. This one's tossed up, cover driven, but they've got the fielder placed well. It's always the way, isn't it, Ross? You go long hop and the next one is uh, full toss. odds on to be a full yeah. toss, over correction. So Shakes currently 12 of 7. He'll be in. Uh, it's another long hop. Helped on its way. Jeez, that poor guy out there is doing some miles at Back the moment. Back square for four more. Alizeb, maybe he's just lost a bit of confidence here. It's dragging it down. As we know, leg spin is a difficult art to conquer. He wasn't feeling too far from that spot the two balls go, then they moved him around. And, oh, he's on again here. He's going to be tired be by tired. the end of today. And they'll come back for two. It's one thing about these, this field, it is big. If you're on the boundary, it is a big run in there if they've just timed it. Tossed up. Ooh. Ooh. Bit of bounce there for Ali. Bit of top spin on that one. So, expensive spell there so far for Ali Zeb. He's gone for 33 in his three. 11s is not really what you want to be going for. If you're going for between six and eight, you consider a decent spell given there's no lots of gaps in the field. Yeah, agreed. And roughly from memory last time I did a bit of a, a data dump we uh globally the average last man stand score is around 160 it's interesting so anything under eights is pretty good for the bowler so 12 overs done 102 for two shyful shakes still 12 of seven tonic tony four of three and we're into the last eight overs so they've just uh but man who was chasing the balls, he's just uh, thinking about a tweak to hamstring. He's just been subbed off there. And the ninth man for Camilla Warriors has gone down to field at deep backward square. There's uh, Ruffs and Zamans into the attack again, the, the leggy. There's uh, Ross Kale just about to step out and get ready for his mid-innings interview. Thanks, so Adam. look Good. forward to getting you... Some good guys lined up there, Roscoe. Catch you soon, buddy. So, Zaman with his off spin. So, it's good from here, from Sheehan. I think this is the right end for Zaman to be bowling. Ball turning into the, into the pads and the long boundary. And into the wind. So, difficult for the batsman to score that side. 
That's a nice looking shot there into the covers, but just for one. Hello to everyone tuning in wherever you are. It's great to have you with us. We've got the Camilla Warriors v. the Dakar Warriors here. This one swept out towards the field. It gets to him on the two bounce though. Live here from Western Province Cricket Club in Cape Town. The stunning Table Mountain peering down over the top of us in the background. And I can see Newlands Cricket Stadium and Newlands... Well, the now defunct Newlands Rugby Stadium in the background as well. Ooh, that's well bowled there. Sharaful Islam just looking to run it off the face. Lucky didn't run that straight into Sheehan's hands there. To the end of the 13th over, 106 for two and well bowled there by Zaman. So I can just see the viewership starting to build up here, so... Drop us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Hello to Nav Naidu. I can see he's just joined us. I hope you're well, buddy. Of course, Nav played for UAE at the LMS World Cup 18. He uh, plays for Abu Dhabi Gentlemen's Club as well. Over there in the United Arab Emirates. This one's neatly tucked behind square on the offside for one. So objected score, 163 here. But I think Dakar Warriors are just getting ready to load up and go for the onslaught. They've got six overs and four balls to come. The leggy Ali Zeb fired that one through there. That's the flipper. It's just gone for one. But a nice looking flipper there. So drop us a comment. Let us know where you're joining from. It's great to hear from everyone around the globe. It's what Last Man Sands is all about. Cricket loving people who are getting involved and staying involved in the game and giving the guys to come from local cricket and play globally. Of course, we've got a team from Dakar here playing against a team from London. So the London team is Camilla Warriors. The Dakar team are the Dakar Warriors. That one, oh, pushed through again. That quicker ball has worked nicely in this over. Brendan Flipper, or if he's just almost bowling it seam up there, but it's effective so far. And again, oh, and this one, I don't know if he tickled that or no. No bat, just uh, burst through Sheehan's gloves and they scampered through for a single. Just, uh, just pushed out the front. Don't think he uh, got anything on it, but just popped through the hands there. So hello to Sam Sharma and Brennan Mays, Navnadu. Sopnil Shohag, thanks for dropping us a like here. Javed Faruqi just asked, where's the match being played? This is Western Province Cricket Club in Cape Town, South Africa. Absolutely beautiful venue. Superb pavilion and uh, great facilities here. So just seeing the guys from... Nengi Lee's coming down underneath us here. They had a great win. Oh, that's hit high, long. Fielder coming in. He's, ooh, he didn't quite go for it. Just pulled up and, well, it's just gone for two. With uh, good sportsmanship there as well. The keeper and the bowler, the keeper and the batsman, sorry, just got entangled and they didn't take the overthrow. So it's good to see. Always great spirit at these events. Just been over to watch three shorts and Daxian Destroyers. The Australian and South African teams playing and uh, getting on like a house on fire after their match. And the off spinner again, that's the leading edge. It's clipped away. They're probably going to come back for two here. Comfortably home. So 
So drop us in a comment here. I can see the viewers starting to fly up here. We've got well over 600 people watching at any given moment at the moment. So keep liking, commenting, sharing. Ooh, and that's taken Aman in the chest there. I hope he's okay. Always recommend batting with a helmet. We unfortunately saw a, a nasty injury to um, Arthur from Wolfpack on the first day. I hope he's doing okay. This one's hit high and long. Fielder settling underneath it. Oh, well done. What a catch. He ran round, was going to step over the boundary, popped it up to his mate. That's an absolutely superb catch there. That'll be on the top 10 moments. I'm just making a note now. Superb catch there. High and long, out to long on. You can just see the fielder comes in from the left to shot. Takes it, going to step over, pops it up to his mate. I don't even think he ran over the rope in the end, but anyway, he shared it with his friend, so he'll get a good catch on his stats there. Nice bit of flight and drop there. We'll just see it again. Hopefully we get a good view on this angle. There it is. In he popped. He did, oh, he did go on the rope there. So fantastic handoff. And we've got the fifth umpire over there watching under the squash courts. And he made sure to give it out. This one's clipped. This could be two. It's well played that. Just worked into the big leg side vacant area and comfortably home. So nice start there for the new batsman. And it's the end of the over now. So, Rubiat Hak into bat now. is a 15th best batsman in Bangladesh on our LMS ranking system. 51 matches, 40 innings, 906 runs, and tick below 40. And a strike rate of 155. He's got the 550s. But uh, Dakar Warriors be hoping he can get that strike rate up more to 200 in this innings. Bit of a flurry. So he's a, uh, from memory, he's a busy, busy cricketer. He'll take lots of twos and threes. Just quoted that word for word from our insider here. So they look to work the gaps. There's a lot of space behind square on the leg side. So if there's anyone watching, you know, drops a like, drops a comment. It's great to see people engaging with the with the match. Oh, Nav Naidu, I see here, he's actually left Abu Dhabi Gentlemen's Club. He's moved to Dubai Wanderers, so that must be very controversial. We've got people watching here from Saudi Arabia. No one's tickled down to find leg. It's probably going to run away for four. If it doesn't, they'll probably still run four, but no, it does make the rope. So a boundary, nice way to start there. Pitched on leg, outside leg. A little bit of dust coming up there. The third game of the day here. Thankfully, this Wally Wilson Square getting some rest tomorrow so they can get plenty of water into it, the groundsman. Good roll to get up a, a belter wicket for Thursday. So a projected score, 158, but they'll be looking to get a few more than that, I imagine. 
And you see the covers off in the distance there. We had a lot of rain last night. Unfortunately, had nine games washed out across the tournament. Or ten games, sorry. But we've managed to reschedule those for tomorrow. Someone's all through Sheehan. He is carrying a knee injury, so he didn't quite get down to that one. He's going for buys. Just the one. No one's just carved away into the offside. So a steady start here. Ruby at Hark striking it at 200 with that four around the corner there. Just the two singles. And Shaful Islam 17 off 13 at the other end. As they try and push his total up towards 150. So wide there though. Nice hit out into the covers there. Should be two. Good running there. We did hear that Ruby at Huck's a, a busy cricketer. Good run between the wickets. So he's a, he's a personal trainer by profession. So fit man. He uh, does the physical fitness for the Rangpur riders in the BPL. So he knows what it what it's required for cricket fitness and he's doing the job here. This is now the off spinner Zaman I think. As he goes to paddle sweep. Oh, no bat though. It's called wide. It's running along. Ruby at Hark. He's pushing. Pushing Islam for three. But Islam. <laughs> he's, I think he's tied there. He sent him back. So just the two. Plus the wide. Yeah, nothing on that. Sheehan down the leg side. Wasn't able to get there. And head after it. Managed to keep it to two. So just getting the mid-wicket a bit square here. And then they've got like a deep, fine leg, essentially. So he's going to be looking to bowl quite straight here. The square leg boundary is open. No one's clubbed out to long on. Not a great connection. So just one. Uh, thanks to everyone who's tuning in on Facebook and YouTube and wherever else you're seeing this. This is, of course, the Last Man Stands World Champs. Group stage match here. This one's hit straight. Should be another two here. Ooh. I think uh, Sharaful is just feeling it a little. Sent Ruby at Huck there. Back to the non-striker's end. Give himself a, a chance. So Zaman in again. Tossed up. But that's hit long and high. Going out. It should be six. Good effort by the fielder. But over his head. That's a fantastic shot there by Sharif islam I think he's had enough of running twos. Plenty of flights on that one. And he went whack. Fielder thought he was half a chance, jumped, but just over his head. And six runs. There we go. City in here, bang. Long, high, and straight. Push through. Oh. 
Don't know if there was a nick on that one. Bowler looks a little disappointed. Keeper, uh, you see it here. Oh, was there a little tickle? So Zaman, he's gone for a few runs here, but he's, he's bowled tightly, I've thought. This one's swept out exactly where there's no one. A deep square leg. He's going to run away in another boundary. So four more runs to the total here for Dakar Warriors. They're cruising. As the crowd's building nicely here on the balcony. So, of course, the innings break here. We're going to pass it down to my man, Ross Kaywood. He's going to get a few of the players lined up for some interviews. Also be joined by some other guests. So you can see the crowd starting to come in nicely there. A few familiar faces and uh, the Greaves having a little conference there with the three short guys from Australia there as well. So fantastic to see everyone coming in. Great support. As uh, Zahir's back in the commentary box here. Just been doing a bit of work behind us. But he's uh, back now to see out these last few overs. See Ross Carroll there prepping his mid-innings interview. Seema back into the attack now. Bang straight. Fielder gets round. He's palmed it a long way though. Scrum down over there. And they come back easily for two. It's good effort down there at long on there. Simon, uh, although I saw the uh, a little uh, puppy do a, a better job yesterday. <laughs> so yeah. it all happens down there at the uh, at long on. Scrambling there f for the ball. Yeah, knock on, scrum down, just at uh, the long off boundary. Looks like the Dhaka Warriors, they've done really well here at 145 for three. Easily the highest score of the day, that's far. Yeah, they've batted nicely as this one should be another two. Oh, no, they just uh, gave up the goose early there. We haven't seen uh, the, the top score on, the, on this ground was uh, the 160 on the first morning. We haven't seen anything close to it as yet, but the Dhaka Warriors, they look like they should surpass that. Attempted uh, reverse, at least a paddle scoop, uh, not uh, being executed there by Rubayat Yak. So Rubayat, he's actually the personal trainer for the Rangpur Riders in the, in the Bangladesh Premier League. So a fit man, he's been pushing Sharful Islam hard between the wickets here. Oh, but he's, that could be out. Fielder coming around. Don't think he's going to get there. Just falls in the gap. But another two. Sometimes you just know when uh, the fielder's going to get there. He, uh, you can see it in his eyes whether he wants it or not. And I don't think either of them were too keen on uh, getting under that one. Uh, ran around a little bit. They, uh, didn't, didn't quite pick up in the wind. Sorry, mate. Just... Uh, this is short, and it's dumped out towards Cow Corner. And they'll come back for another two. So you can see the I think that's Team Masagami just grouping in the deep mid wicket boundary. They're one of the favourites for the event. Got some uh, very good players amongst their ranks. So we'll be looking forward to seeing them play next. There's a change of pads here for the, the batsman. Or he's just... It's good to see this, though, the Camilla Warriors guys helping the Dakar Warriors guys put his pads on. Good bit of sportsmanship out there. Well, I don't think you'll be seeing him helping put his thigh pad on. We've got uh, Mirza Bay, the leg spinner. Back into the attacks. It'll be interesting to see how the leg spin goes here. 
second last over. It's risky time to bring the leggy back. It's only uh, it's a bit of a cardinal sin there, isn't it, Zahid? No, uh, no spin in the last couple of overs of a T20. Yeah, I think it's, uh, as they say, it's party time right now. And uh, leg spin has never been a party pooper, that's for sure. So it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be a tough ask, although if he's going to bowl that quick, uh, they might have something up their sleeve here. Yeah, he pushed, pushed it through. He did that in his f first few overs as well. I'd like to see a little bit more usage of the reverse sweep. I think uh, that does put the, uh, the spinners under immense pressure if you are bowling that quick. No, I haven't, se I haven't seen many yet this tournament. That's one. That looked like it was out the front of the hand there. That looked like a straight up seamer. That, uh, oh, it's trickling over oh, the front. Oh, no, there. I think he just got, oh, no, it did hit the oh, rope there. Hit the rope, and uh, I think if there's a fair play award, he can, uh, he'll be gaining some points for his team there because uh, it looked like he might have saved it, but uh, that rope just uh, winning it there in the end. It's close, though. You can see it just there, and it. And it's cut off. Just, just made it. <laughs> <laughs> so the Dhaka Warriors, that's another boundary for them. They move to 154 for three. And uh, it's still uh, seven balls he made, at least. So one, 170, balls, surely. Got to be thinking 170, I think, here. He's, he's used his feet there, skipped down. Smacked that one out to long off. I don't think Mirza Beg's going to be giving much flight in these last few balls of his spell here he's only gone for the 19 so far so he's been pretty tidy so he's just getting his field so he's almost got like a oh they so it's sorry it's the last two overs so they can use the power play so just two in the leg side tell you what it's uh it's brave they've got almost like a, a slip on the boundary deep point Deep cover, long off, long on, and then a the man, it's deep square, deep mid wicket, it's a bit somewhere in between. So there's a massive gap at cow corner, a big gap behind square on the leg side. That's just a nice little uh, dab down to the man at deep cover. Picks up another one. And that's a good way to get out to the over for Mirza. He finishes with one for 20 off to four overs. And considering the carnage that has happened, it's, uh, he'll uh, walk off there feeling that his job is done for the day. Definitely. So we, uh, one over left here. And then the Camilla Warriors will get a poke and try and chase, chase down this total. It's probably going to be around the 170 mark, I imagine. Of course, Camilla Warriors, the backbone of their batting is uh, Animal Sheehan, the wicketkeeper. He's a very accomplished player. Been playing last man stands for a long time. So five balls left. And it's the, the seamer, Mozaharul Hawk, that's back for his final over. He's been tidy as well, one for 17 off the three. So just getting their field right here. So they've gone back to conventional 3-3. Three, three. They've got fine leg, deep in wicket, long on, deep cover, long off in the third man. This one's hit out to long on. They're running hard. Hark turned for two and sent his mate back, but they all good. So it's turned into an absolutely stunning day here in Cape Town. So a little bit of cloudiness this morning, but it's all cleared up. As that one's banged out into that gap at deep mid wicket. Jeez, that's a big hit. Massive hit there by Rubia. We said he was busy, loved rain of twos and threes, but shows he's got a bit of power as well. That's, that's a, a big boundary. That's the long boundary, Sam. That's exactly what I was about to say. And it literally hit the rope and uh, just making it over. But uh, once again, it, uh, as we say, you've got to have a strong upper body to get it over the line there. His caddy's giving him the perfect club there. <laughs> that one's down the leg side. He's moved across the crease, so good call by the umpy there. He's just giving it buzz. He went across to the, the offside, and I think it looked like it went over leg stump, but just a hard length. 
think no. the, the six has also taken the Dhaka Warriors to the highest total year at the Willie Watson for this uh, for this week thus far. That eclipses the 160 in the opening game. It was achieved with 8-12 off the final delivery. Uh, of course, one of the quirks of last man stands, the final ball of the both innings. If you hit it for six, it's worth 12. So always something that the teams try and eye up, especially in the first innings. So we could still get up to 180 here? Or one, 178. 178. But that one just, uh, I just held in the wicket there. It's a bit of a puff. The final ball of innings, as we said. If this does go for the maximum, we double it up to 12. So that's exactly what uh, Shariful Islam Sheikh will be looking to do. He's played a handy role here, 35 of 22, 23, and uh, Rubayat, 27 of 15. Now they've batted nicely together. It's just going to be a tall ask for Camilla Warriors. The Dakar Warriors have got some, some decent bowlers. And I think they'll have picked up the conditions here. So final ball here. He's hit it long. Is it going? Back, back, back. And gone. It's a 12. What he... a strike by Shariful Islam. Sheikh, we called it that uh, the one that goes for six of the final ball doubles it up. And that's exactly what he's done for his team. And that is a phenomenal knock by the Dakar Warriors. And that's just the cherry on the cake. He hit that high and long. And it just kept going. A fielder went up on the mound there, well over his head. And I don't know if he'll get on the camera, but he enjoyed that as well. Gave it a few little fist pumps at the end. It's not every day you can say, I've hit a 12. So, uh, as you see, the fielder, I don't think he knew where the bounce no. was. He was uh, up on the mound already. And whether he caught it or not, it would still have been a maximum. So look at that. Shaful shake, 47 off 24 balls. Striking at 195, two fours, two sixes, and finishes unbeaten. So nice day's work for him. That's a really good effort there. By Shariful Islam. Of course, we had Amin Allah Aman knocked up a 50 of 29 balls. Shariful Islam unbeaten there at the end. Only faced at 24 balls, but he opened the inning, so he didn't see much of the strike. I think the key to that innings, if you look at them, uh, majority besides Habibur Rahman have gone above 100% strike rate. That's kind of been the challenge throughout the week. Bat is not able to uh, just reach the minimum of 100. Yeah, definitely. I think they, there wasn't many drop balls as well. I, I wish I had a stat for how many drop balls there were, but uh, I can't remember many. The back got beaten a couple of times, but most of the time they managed to get at least a one or a two and keep the strike rotating. So I think that's one of the keys for all the teams here. It's not, especially on this big outfield, it's not all about fours and sixes. Yes, it's nice, but if every ball, if you're just getting a score, if you get two a ball, that's 200. So it's important to remember for these guys that sometimes guys get a bit carried away with the, the short boundary and the, the cameras and trying to bomb it into the stands. But it's just as effective to knock it around and run hard. As the Misagami guys are just out here, Having a look at the track. Of course, they're playing next. And we'll see you back in a short while for the... Yeah, we're, no. we're just about to pass down to Ross Kaywood now. We're just uh, prepping down there for the mid-innings interview. He's got a few players lined up. I'm uh, sure he'll do well. And we're about to cross over to him now. So down to you, Roscoe.
and helping to uh, playing this type of tournament. So uh, thank you so much, LMS, and we are enjoying. Thank you. So yeah, good, a good win on the first day. A, a win today. We'll see you into the last 16. You guys prepared for the last 16? Yeah, inshallah. Yeah, it was a good win with a bonus point, right? So inshallah, we will try to uh, get a, another bonus point today. Uh, hopefully, I want to, uh, we uh, uh, finished our first innings. Uh, I think it's a good st score. Inshallah, we will uh, finish our second session. Then inshallah, we'll uh, we'll be, uh, win this match. Hopefully, we'll go to a second round. Good luck. Go well. Next, I have with me Nav from London. He plays for the Camellia Warriors. He's uh, getting involved in the Indian Super Series in March. He's taken on the De on the Delhi team. Nav, excited about the tournament? I'm absolutely uh, excited. I think it'll be a great tournament uh, with AB saying a lot of uh, positive things about um, about the tournament. We'll have a lot of amateur cricketers who will play at a, such a big stage. Big opportunity for them, uh, and especially the under 20 months that will be involved. So I think it'll be amazing out there. Uh, you and I having a chat yesterday. Um, you, you've got sounds like you've got a pretty strong team lined up. The guys looking forward to it. Uh, absolutely, I think we've, I've got a good setup of uh, lads playing. I've got I've signed someone from the World Champs today to play uh, for Delhi Lions. Um, I think yeah, it's it's going to be an amazing tournament. Um, so you also you're from London. You play in the in the London competition. The Camilla Warriors. They're having a good time in Cape Town. Uh, it's amazing out here and I just wanted to thank yourself and Wayne and the whole team. I think you've got an amazing setup here. Uh, we are loving each and every moment with LMS here. Well, good luck and uh, enjoy the rest of the tournament. Thank you so much. Cool. Thank you. Next I have with me Davi from the Dekuldurungs. <laughs> you've had a tough tournament, so lost two from two, but the guys are having a good time. No, it's been fantastic. I, I mean, the guys... They've enjoyed every game. The facilities here are absolutely amazing, Rossi. I mean, the, the work that you guys do are amazing. So, you know, we haven't had a great start to the tournament, but we could have a great end, you know. So are you guys eyeing up the, the bowl finalists to take, take that trophy home? We eyeing up anything that we can win, huh? <laughs> even a free drink, that would be great. <laughs> uh, and you guys play in the, the Rudaput competition, apparently? Yes, we do. Yeah, fantastic facilities there as well. I mean, we've been playing for... I don't know, since LMA started and, and everything has just been fantastic. We've had so much fun here in 2017 and today as well. You know, the facilities here are fantastic and I think LMS does a fantastic job. On a personal level, how have you done this tournament? I have been in a uh, couple of sixes and out. <laughs> that's, that's what's happened to me. I think the guys are quite angry because I have to push on a little bit better. Uh, we were prepared, you know, we were well prepared, but I think a couple of brain farts I ran myself out, I think for the first time in 250 games <laughs> yesterday and today I played a horrific cricket shot, which I'm still drinking for. I see the guys up there <laughs> waiting for me. Well, anyway, go well the rest of the tournament. And uh, back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Ross. Fantastic work, as always, down there from you. And uh, great to hear from the guys uh, about the tournament and life and the world champs and everything that's going on. So thanks for that. So we've just got the Dakar Warriors prepping here. They're out doing a few warm-ups and bowling a few uh, deliveries. Of course, the Camilla Warriors are going to be chasing 179 to win. Our umpire is strolling out to the middle now, Tulani and Johannes. And the be shortly joined by the Camilla Warriors batsman. As it's an absolutely stunning afternoon here in Cape Town. The wind was howling this morning. It seems to have dropped off a little bit. The sun's out. There's plenty of people here on the, the deck who have played their game or come in to watch and, and enjoying a drink. We've got the Jack Black's beer tent down underneath us as well. So all all absolutely fantastic here at the LMS World Champs here in Cape Town. So the two batsmen now striding out to the middle. We've got Anwar Sheehan as one of them. And the other one just getting his name now. So Sheehan's a left-hander. Looks like he's going to be at the non-striker's end. And the name's just about to pull through. You can see Tulani putting it in the scores there. So 
So it looks like Duck Old Warriors just going to start with a conventional field. And it's going to be spin to start by the looks of things. We've got the backward point. Cover who's about 30 yards in off the boundary. Got long off, long on. Deep mid wicket and a deep backward square. They're just getting the angles right. So Ali Zeb and Aminul Shihan it is. And I'm joined again by Zahir here in the commentary box. And we're going to run us through. And it's the uh, Kamalil Warriors with a real task on their hands. And they get off the mark with the first ball with a, just a nice little cut shot down to the cover boundary. I'm sure the Dhaka Warriors, they'll be backing themselves to defend this uh, 179 going to be, uh, if the uh, Camilla Warriors do get close, it's going to be one hell of a chase. And we're in for some uh, grand entertainment this afternoon if they do get uh, close. Sheehan, the left hand, who's carrying a knee injury. And that's well left in the end. Those runs will still go to his tally in the last man stands format. But he's left that down the leg side. I think it'll be wide. And they'll come back for two. You can just see Sheehan, he's just hobbling a little bit there. He's coming to this tournament with a knee injury, which is unfortunate. It's a, he's a very compact batsman, scores a lot of runs in club cricket and also last man stands in London. He always posts when he scored a 100. I've seen a few of those, so must have got a few this season. He'll be targeting, hitting with the spin. Inside out to the offside. It's come to be tucked around the corner. It's been a relatively uh, calm start by the Camilla Warriors. But they uh, do know that they've got a. There's no time uh, to. Assess the conditions, they've got to go out from ball one. And uh, Musharraf absolutely dismayed with himself there. Bowls another wide and just kicks the turf in disgust. As he knows, that's the extra three runs. So he's just bowling into the wicket here. It's got another wide here. Not happy. He's got the double teapot going. That's uh, eight runs in wides already. This one's flighted up and just nice little late cut dab. So the live scoring here is just catching up. Two lines just uh, sorted out and they'll pull through shortly. We just had a few connection issues today with the uh, load shedding and the, the internet going down at Newlands and the satellite link and a few various things, but we're working through it. He's the end of the first over though for the... Camilla Warriors, they, uh, without uh, doing much, they've uh, possibly up there with a the run rate. Yeah, they're, wide rate. they're looking good. So uh, they're just going to keep batting here. These two need to be looking to get around 30, 35, ball 50s. So we've got Shani and Tanim now into the attack. He's the, the team manager. Left arm spin. It's cut away. There should be two here. Sheehan turning. He's hobbling a little bit, but gets the cadence up and manages to get home comfortably. The Dhaka Warriors, they've gone with uh, spin from the outset. Right, and now the left arm spin. This one's paddled around the corner. It's probably going to run away for four. Field is coming around, gets the boot out. He didn't want to miss with his boot there. He probably would have got a, a bollocking off the, the skipper here. Uh, just getting some advice. I think he wants to keep it out towards the offside here, make them hit through the covers. Someone just a little straight. But a good start here from Camilla Warriors, not taking any risk, but they're ticking the score along nicely. So up to 16 now. 
1.3 overs. Just holds on to it there. Is that a little bit of a okay. little warning there? It just says, hold your hold horses your there, pal. Hold your ground. We had this chat yesterday, didn't we? Yeah. And that's a nice little... Wasn't quite a slog sweep. He just rolled his wrist on it at the end, so he didn't find the fielder. It looks like he's really struggling with his running. Poor Sheehan. He's carrying that ACL injury. So Ali Zeb here. Bit of T and B there from Shanian. And we found Ali Zeb's base has left that one into his chest there. That's the end of the second over. They are going at uh, nine runs to the over, 18 without loss. The Camilla Warriors. And I can't remember them playing a shot in anger as yet. So just a little bit uh, ill-disciplined from the Dhaka Warriors. They do have a record total on the ground for the week. But you still got to do the other half, and that's remain disciplined with ball and in the field. That's one up in the air. It's going towards the square leg fielder, and it's straight down. He's throat. He takes the catch, and that's the first wicket lost by the Camilla Warriors. Unfortunate there for Sheehan. He's just looking to up the impetus there, and he... Uh Bit of a top edge and flew down and it's actually quite a long hit out there even off the top edge of taking it five yards inside. That's the end of his innings. You just see it again here. He went big but he just just dragged it around the corner there a little bit. He also picked out the man perfectly. Yeah. Really. He did not need to uh, take a step either side and gobbled it up. That's the first wicket for the Dakar Warriors. It almost looks like a uh, two-card trick there. Go the long hop straight, and he just picked him up perfectly. So unfortunate for the Camilla Warriors captain. And the loss of the first wicket here for the side. So we got Christopher Arrell now into bat. Simon, there's one uh, interesting aspect that I've picked up about the uh, double play rule. And it's uh, just been prompted at ICC level as well. That So without uh, you actually orchestrating it, but if you don't run the, uh, the second and don't, you don't get back, nine times out of ten you do get the new batter on strike for, the, for the, when the wicket falls. And that just makes a huge difference, particularly when uh, at the death overs. Yeah, definitely so. I think that's a really uh, one of the one of the better rules that has been changed recently, and uh, I think last man standing set the trend there. Well, yeah, we pioneered it, I'd say, but it's, it's uh, no, it's been good and it keeps it interesting. Teams can't, especially with the retiring at 50 as well, you can't just rely on one or two batsmen to score all your runs. You need needs to be a collective effort. So that's a short ball there, just out the front of the hand and. Ooh, good intensity by the fielder. Trying to catch Christopher Arrell napping. So they've pushed up now to 19 for one. We should have been much better here in the second over. He uh, <sighs> gone through the keeper there. He delivered three wides in his first over. So he's uh, needed to warm up a little bit. No, maybe yeah. just a little bit stiff there. So he's bowled that nicely, and that's the end of his second over there. And Dakar Warriors, they're flying through the overs here. Shani and Tanim back in to bowl. They might have a dinner reservation for later this afternoon, perhaps. So if you're watching on Facebook or... YouTube, drop us a message. We always love to hear from uh, everyone watching and your thoughts on the game. Let us know who you think's going to win. Is this going to be tight? But Arul, Ali Zeb, sorry, makes it home there. Well fielded out there by Habib Al Rahman. So Shanian 
It's bowled nicely here. Just the eight off so far. He's getting a bit of bite there off the wicket. So that one just slow and just sat up a lit, little bit and bottom edge. Nearly a bit of confusion there from the batsman. He makes it home. Oh, and that one's just flayed away. Not, I wouldn't say that's in control. Gets a single. So what have you made of the Dakar Warriors' tactics so far as here? You think they playing it well, or I think they are keen to get their get their spinners out of the way before the at the at the back end. I do feel it's uh, <laughs> he's done it again. Although the batsman was uh, very much behind the crease, I do feel though uh, it's a bit of a risk bowling a left arm spinner uh, with a short boundary. No, definitely can't give it much, uh, much flight. It is against the spin if he's going to hit it to the leg side, but yeah, it's, uh, he's angling in towards the pad, so just asking for trouble. But he's bowled well so far, just into the wicket, outside off stump. You know, with, the left, with the left hand, I think uh, being dismissed as well, it does uh, make it a little bit easier. But. Um, Camilla Warriors, they, uh, they've got a tough task on their hands here. Yeah. yeah, they're up against it here. Definitely up against it. 26 for one after four. They need 153 of 80 balls. So it's almost up to two a ball or 10 and over in this format with the five ball overs. So they've travelled a long way, both these teams. Camilla Warriors coming from London. They play it in Millwall Park, which is uh, just near Canary Wharf. And you've got Dakar Warriors, of course, from Dakar in Bangladesh. There's quite a few strong, I think there's five Bangladeshi teams here at the tournament, and they're all fairly strong. And they'll all be looking to try and get through to the round of 16 and onwards. We see the first seamer of the day now, and he's been met short and wide and clapped out towards the boundary. Well done by the fielder out there. Just corrals the ball inside the rope. So this is Ruby at Hark here. He batted very nicely in the first innings. So if anyone wondering about the format of this tournament, we've got 36 teams here, nine groups of four. Everyone plays each other once in the group stages across the various fields here we have uh, using for the event. And then the top two from each group go into the cup playoffs and the bottom two into the plate playoffs. And then there's uh, other competitions that split off from that as well. So everyone gets plenty of cricket. Sam, I know we've uh, had a bit of rain yesterday, but... Uh Will today be the last day of the uh, group games? So we've got we've lost ten games yesterday, so we've managed to reschedule them for tomorrow, and we've shuffled the uh, the deck of cards a little bit. We've, uh, of course, there could potentially be more rain coming on Friday. The forecast doesn't look great, but we've uh, managed to build in a reserve day on Saturday, just the way we've moved things around. So we've got that up our sleeve. But the the finals day will be on Sunday. Sam, it sounds like we need to get you at the ICC. The more reserved days here, more better and much better preparation than we've seen at the uh, World Cups, where we just lost games due to uh, particularly the last T20 World Cup in Australia. Yeah, definitely. It's been a lot of rain in Australia. I've been speaking to my mum recently, and she, my dad's been doing some work with the army for flood recovery and some places that have uh, been flooded three times in the last year, so heartbreaking for those guys. But yeah, a lot of cricket got lost in the World Cup. It didn't help uh, poor old South Africa. No, it didn't. Uh, although they, uh, in fairness, uh, didn't help themselves as well. If you're losing to Netherlands in a, in a good in a side, though, the game. Netherlands. <laughs> Let's get serious, mate. Let's get serious. <laughs> yeah, it 
Yeah, it's quality cricketers down there in the Dutch. Yeah, they've got a few good players, but... Uh, Pretty, they're all South African. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Ruby and Huck not happy there with the misfield from the fielder. There's, there's ball tampering almost how hard he <laughs> threw that into the square. Matthew, if you would have to look at that. Yeah, I'll be reviewing it in the post-match review. Uh, and it just comes in here, not happy, thumps it into the turf. It's working on a bit of reverse wing later in the afternoon. <laughs> well, if it starts hooping in there. Of course, Cape Town's had a few things with that kind of stuff. Yeah, Roughing up the ball uh, and a bit of reverse. Just across the way. This is a new bowler now, so it's Tanok Tonu into the attack. Not seen him yet today. 33 for one. So Ali Zeb, 18 off 14 here. Chris Farrell just into his work. The leggy. And Ali Zeb's looked very competent, hitting out towards the offside, just making some room for himself. Haven't seen him line up this short boundary yet. But if he's still in when they spin around in five overs time, then he might be looking to go inside out into the pool area. So it's been interesting, the tactics with from the batsmen here. Guys have targeted or not targeted the, the leg side boundary. Some guys have really gone hard for it, sometimes a bit too much. But other guys have just batted normally and tried to benefit where they could. I think the slog sweep has to be an option here. You have to get down on your knee and... Uh Swing as hard as you can, as we call it, and that's exactly what he does. And that's the first boundary in that direction, exactly as we called it. Finally hauled out the sweep and uh, timed it sweetly for a for a much needed boundary by the for the Camilla Warriors. Yeah, hit that very sweetly indeed. I'm going to step away now, try to see if we can get someone in to replace me. But uh, here, always a pleasure, and I'll be back shortly, hopefully. See you uh, very soon. That's a lot quicker. He pushes it into the uh, into the covers. Should come back for a comfortable two, which they do. And uh, suddenly the Camilla Warriors just uh, creating a much needed momentum. They uh, require 138 of 71 balls, so it's virtually two runs of all. So uh, they need to get uh, get a move on. Tossed up by Tunok Tonu. The big swipe came out. Uh, missed it, unfortunately. That is the over. 41 for 6. Are oh, the Camilla Warriors in pursuit of a mammoth As we uh, welcome Wayne into the uh, commentary box for the afternoon stint. Um, yeah, I know he's been uh, busy on the other fields. He'll have to bowl that one again. There's Ruby. Ruby, what's the action like on the other fields there, Wayne? Let's hear that one again. <laughs> Ricky was, Ricky was the Oosh <laughs> that is fantastic stuff down there on the uh, the lower fields. So it's not only the Willie Watson that uh, that keeps you entertained. It's LMS one, LMS two, and LMS three. Brings a variety of commentary. He's got his own style. 
certainly something for the viewers to look forward to. This looks like a good game in, in hand, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the highest score that was uh, made today, uh, for this week at least, on the Willie Watson, for all the talk of being slow and low. The Dhaka Warriors, they came out and they played very, very nicely. They got 178. And the Kamala Warriors, they've been uh, on form thus far in their pursuit. I think it's it's more the batters, to be honest. Uh, they've uh, they showed good skill earlier, and also both teams have been looking to run hard, and that's the key here uh, on such a big field. I think it's. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's still hard work uh, when pace is taken off the ball. As soon as there's a little bit of seam. That's when the batters do get uh, get excited. And uh, they've set it up nicely here at 47 for one. It's still a massive task, though, of requiring 132 of 65 balls. That's Now it's over two runs a ball. Watching earlier, the, uh, the Dakar Warriors didn't think they were going to get anywhere near 179. Did they have a flurry at the back end? They had a mass to, uh, massive partnership there at the back. They, um, they really uh, accelerated towards the towards the latter stages. And then uh, the customary maximum for the final ball, that also... Uh, I, was, I was actually going to ask that because they were trying to work out how they got to 179. And just, pro just propelled it. Hit it straight over, long on, went uh, went downhill, and uh, the fielder thought he was in the business. The next moment he checked, he was uh, up on the hill, fetching the ball. That's uh, really uh, flowing through by Sharif Al Islam Sheikh. He was one of the batters that uh, was really impressive for the Dhaka Warriors. And uh, you've been watching uh, quite a few teams now. You've probably seen at least 20 or 30 of the teams in your three days of commentary. Are you starting to see any teams that you think are semi finalists, quarter finalists? If I you say from what you've seen so far, could you name me? I definitely think the uh, Yankee Royals. They uh, they are a side that that you have to look out for, um, for in the latter stages. Even the team they beat as well, the Twilikis. I think uh, they might have gone down there in that one, but they will be around in the at the back end of the competition. Also, like the look of uh, the Royals, the uh, Shawfire Royals. They so sorry, the Shawfire Lions. Peter Mattersburg bunch, they, uh, with uh, Robbie Freilink, they, uh, they look like a well-organized bunch. They uh, know their roles and they, they stick to it. And then we saw this morning the uh, boys from Bloemfontein, the challengers, the sea, they, uh, they put on a real show. So uh, I think that's my bet. And it, uh, if the Dhaka Warriors continue here, I think that could be my four thus far. Yeah, they were. They were really impressive. I wasn't uh, on commentary much for them uh, during their batting, but uh, they, they did uh, their Joginder Singh, if I'm correct, the, uh, the off-spinner. He, uh, he was really impressive. So uh, definitely lots of talent on show for this week, and I'm sure the other fields are equally uh, blessed with a, an abundance of talent. So uh, it's not just uh, eating a giggle out here. These guys are playing some serious cricket, and they all look... I think it's a 
It's going to be... Uh, it's going to be real pity that I won't be here for the knockout stages because it, I think you're going to be in for a real treat here at the Willie Watson Oval. There's some... Uh, you know, when the, the stakes are a bit higher, that's when the pressure's really on and uh, that's when the big men step up. Will you be uh, able to watch a bit in between the other stuff that you do? Maybe you can catch a glimpse of the, the game on Facebook or YouTube? 100%. That's why LMS1 uh, is there and LMS2, if wherever you've got a bit of data, you know, uh, you got to... I think I've downloaded it already. I've put it in my favorites. It's been a fantastic week uh, with you guys and I uh, really enjoyed it. Looking forward to coming back. Hope you feel have me. Yes, we'd love to have you back. You've added a different dimension to the commentary. Uh, we know you've done it at a much higher level than us for your amateurs, but we great to have uh, new insights and we've learned a few things with you. Really good. I think this is the this is the lifeblood of the game. This is grassroots and uh, this is exactly what uh, keeps uh, keeps the game alive. I have seen some interesting actions this week, definitely. Like it looked like a handful here, the, the Warriors, the Dakar Warriors. A good shot off the field rock. For me, it does look like it's coming on a little bit better. I mean, we've been rolling the wicket more today, so I feel that's holding it together. Maybe with a little bit of moisture that's got into the wicket. This field rock, you know, a lot of the delivery seems to be pinging off a little bit more. That's a nice little pull shot. Uh, straight to the fielder, though, unfortunately. And as we've seen there, when the bowler does uh, bend his back, yeah. you will get a bit of purchase off the, off the surface. That's the end of the over. It's 54, 55 for one after nine. Let's pick I up. Think, must-win game for the Camilla Warriors. they the same group as Nengalese, um, as we mentioned earlier, and they lost to Nengalese already. And uh, if they lose here, they'll pretty much be out. You see this played away down to mid-wicket. They're going to need a big over here before the turn. So, yeah. And I think uh, they're going to need a, at least a minimum 20 run over here just to get them back in the game. Because the, the rate, uh, it's climbing with every ball, every passing ball. That's the top edge down to short third man. I think if they've, their best bet is possibly trying to play for the losing. Oh, no, they steal a stolen a single there. That's naughty from the Dakar Warriors. But the, uh, I think the best bet for the Camilla Warriors is to at least get to the 16th over. And not uh, lose with uh, yeah, so without the bonus points. In 80 percent of 180, so what's that? 140. Yeah, it's probably around 140. They have to get that to get the losing bonus points. Don't know if that'll be enough, but it might help. It is a plate competition, so it'll help. Is that gone? That Shout is gone. That's a great hit. Whenever Ali Zeb has got down on his knee, that's when he's looked at his best. He struck one sweetly earlier, and he's uh, done it again. So um, definitely gets uh, gets another boundary, a much needed boundary for the Camilla Warriors. A small frame, but he's an elegant player to watch. You know, he's there. A little strike rate that needs to go up there. He's only going to run a ball. When you're chasing 100 and close on 180, you've got to go at least a minimum of 120 to 140 a year to stand a chance. More than two ball required now, so it's, it's going to take some getting this from here. That won't uh, bother umpire Tulani. He just shows us going down leg. That's the end of the over. 64 for one. The Camilla Warriors are also the end of the 10. And we will uh, see them switch over to the Avenue de Mist.
The one aspect I enjoyed about the, from the New Zealand side was the fact that they've been the only team thus far in the competition to start from the avenue to miss them. I thought that was a change up and it uh, paid dividends. And I, I quite like the thinking behind it. If we look at the scorecard, only said 38 from 28. Uh, a rule just to 19 to 20, but what I liked about it is they, they took the power play, they went for a 4 2 field, so they protected the small boundary, they pulled one side of the wicket, and they were prepared to, to leave the only two fielders on the on side, and that's a big, big boundary out there. So I think that's a bit that's a good point you made. That I'm surprised other teams who have good pace balls up front haven't looked to that as well because you can take the leg side out of it equation and you can just bowl to one side of the wicket almost like a you know, club cricket game when you get your builders in the you can even get a point in you can get a they play they played with a slip in every in every with every over as well and it just makes the batsman think think about it it actually builds a bit of pressure i know we spoke off air about the importance of captaincy when and uh, i think uh, as you reach the uh the business end of the tournament, the captains will, uh, their abilities will come through a lot more. I mean, in any format of cricket, the captain's role is important. Obviously, you can test cricket right down, but things happen so quickly in a last man stands game that I'd argue so captaincy in last man stands is one of the most important things because you've only got 100 balls, you've got eight, eight fielders, so six fielders, and um, you're bowling 10 overs from one end. 10 from another end, so it's not a case of just um, not planning, you've got to plan before you go out there as to which bowlers you want to bowl from which end um, you also got to be able to adjust your plan so get the right angles and as we see the third man coming in now with the boundary so it looks like you know they, they've obviously got game plans, there's a field there you just come in there they, the Dakar Warriors are clearly uh, well drilled out but with a good captain you can just see with the field setting and game plans they've got here that they're going to go deep in this tournament that's just set up nicely for oh, great building superbly filled it honestly we thought that one would have uh, raced to the boundary but uh, the man at uh, long off uh, does splendidly well that well that he's made from extra cover ran all the way to uh, just give him a high five Use of a feet and inside out, yeah. Hit that hard, that should be four. Feel it, just the mid ons coming around all the way around. Okay, this is exactly what we're talking about the field plate. What they've done is they've got their mid off to a wide, almost an extra cover. And because they've not allowed another field on the on, on side, offside, they've almost got their mid on to do the mid off roll. Yeah, he's uh, directly behind the wicket. That's going straight to him. That's is he going to take it? Hit. Oh, that's so unlucky. He's hit that well, hasn't he? If in any other field in this tournament, I think that would have been six. I think we need to give uh, some uh, credit to the fielder as well. He, uh, he was backpedaling. We don't know the strength of the wind. It's going, it's going. But he just settled himself nicely. And he watched, looked at the boundary, behind, the rope behind him. And just took a neat catch. We've seen a few players uh, just misjudge the ball on the that particular boundary and run uh, straight past it and pass for four. But uh, he uh, he showed a good understanding of the rules. Yeah, and good Perfect. camera work as well, clearly inside the rope. Fantastic I, camera work. I'd like to come back to the ball before that. I, he covered the mid off there, so he's almost covering two two roles. You know, and that's obviously the best field in the team. They've realised that they need someone that can get across the ball before I thought it was four. And let's be honest with a lot of the other teams we've seen this one that would have been four. So they've thought out, they've got it, the right field in the right position. And the next ball, it's almost, he was in the regulation mid on. So he's, he's done two rolls in two different deliveries there. Now that is, uh, and that's, uh, that just also shows that this is a side that uh, they've played together for a while. They know, they, they do know each other. And, uh, very, very important to get your best fielders in the in the in the in the key positions in the busy areas, as they say, the red zone, and that's exactly what uh, the Dhaka Warriors have done there. Oh, I like that 
chuck. Not must be enough person if he should come to work too for himself, yeah? Ali Zip played well, deserves a 50. Bill Pilsha. Masagi, the boys are up next. That's all number one ranked side. Oh, it's a good crit shot, just not quite coming up. But I like the thinking there because if he beats the, the short third man, it's four. It's a real uphill battle for the Camilla Warriors now. They uh, require 109 off the final nine overs. And if anybody's uh, going to get them closer, closer it's uh, Mirza Farhad Big. He's quite a big gentleman. And I'm sure he knows exactly one way to play. And that's uh, it's either go big or go home, yeah. I think that having that left hand gives them a little bit of a hope here to be able to go next right towards the boundary. I'd like to have a look at one, but I don't think many more than that because every time there's a dot ball, that run rate just goes up. Skyrockets, it's just skyrockets. That's the one he's waiting for. And that's going to be four. Almost six. I think he might have been disappointed that he hasn't uh, actually put that on the grass bank. It was a juicy little full toss. And uh, we said second ball, he will have a go. That's the end. Is that the end of the over? Yes, no, I think the ball is just getting a bit of, bit of attention here. He's uh, side Ibn Musharraf. And he's actually being uh, replaced. Yeah. Musharraf's not going to complete the over. Has he completed the over? Yeah, he's completed the over. So that's 12 gone for the Camilla Warriors. There you see, that's the straight out, uh, that's the equation. 101 of just 40 balls. I think this could possibly be out of the reach of the Camilla Warriors unless Daniel Pereira, he plays an innings of note here. Yeah, he's got 50 or 15 balls here. It's gone big. Field is coming around. Oh, good attempt. It's a really, really good attempt out in the deep. But it's uh, all it ends up is another boundary to the big man. So uh, definitely came in with uh, plenty of intent here. He's faced three balls. He's hit two boundaries. Goes again. This could be four. Well placed. Oh, brilliant start here from... This is just what the... Daniel Pereira, he's on the charge here. He's f so for those of you confused how the batsmen's names changed, I think there was a problem in the live scoring. So the live scoring system controlled by the umpire drives the, the batting scorecard, and I think they just made a correction there. Hasn't quite middled that one, unfortunately, as Pereira. It's uh, up to Ali Zeb. He's got to continue the uh, onslaught here. Yeah, he needs to back up the road. He needs to try and find two boundaries here. Almost needs a reverse pull. Reverse log sweep. <laughs> Not that they have. If you're going to go that way, you've got to go uh, the f whole hog. Yeah, yeah. And that's a great comeback by Tanim. He was put under pressure by Pereira, but once the strike was overturned, he managed to two dots to Ali Zeb. And we've got an equation of 92 of 35. I think teams that have got spinners, we can spin it both ways. You know, if you've got a right arm wrist spinner or a left arm spinner and a off spinner, it gives you an advantage because as the, the tournament goes on, you know, the ball is going to spin and you want to try and 
get the guy hit into the backman, hit him away from the, the leg boundary, as you saw earlier there with Pereira being able to go with the spin to leg side. It's a lot easier than for the right hand batsman. Now. Once again, it's uh, Pereira on strike. He is the key for the Camilla Warriors. I think anything uh, slightly short might be coming our way, uh, Wayne. Not a bad batting effort this from Camilla Warriors. Just a lot of runs they having to get, but most of the other games they would have been on on target. Yeah. General 125, 130 has been a decent score on the main oval at Western Province Cricket Club. And if they were chasing a score of 130, they would, they would be in it with a good chance here. But those extra 50 runs have almost put this game out of reach for them. Wayne, I'm gonna give you a, send you a theory which I think uh, Camilla Warriors uh, could employ here. Might be a little, uh, might be a little risky, but if I've got the left armor, the left hander at the crease, I'd w I'd be wanting him to face as many balls as possible. And I know that Ali Zeb has done has been fantastically well with 42 of 34, but uh, I don't see the value of a little single into the leg side. I'd much rather have uh, Daniel uh, face the majority of the over and just get as many as he can. All or nothing, yeah. Because uh, as g as a good player as uh, Young Ali is. I don't think he's going to be the one hitting the ball out the ground. I agree. Especially after that one that got him in the unmentionables. <laughs> I'd like to see Pereira face as many balls <laughs> from the spinner. <laughs> I, I get where you're going, going with that one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, really just uh, line him up. This, this slight pause in the the day's play here. As uh, Ali Zeb, who played so well, struggled towards the back of his end, end of his innings to, to get the ball away, but he's uh, not feeling too comfortable. This one ball got him in the midriff. So he's retired hurt. The new batsman is Mirza Fahad Baig. And he's going to need to bring all his energy and firepower to the crease. That's almost a three a ball needed now. Which is at very best a 2% chance of winning the game from here. So it's going to take a miracle in India for for the Camilla Warriors to overcome the Dakar Warriors. At least at the end of the day, there will be a warrior that's won. Yeah. <laughs> bad jokes, bad jokes. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I do think, though, that you've uh, got to get uh, the big man Pereira on strike here. He's the key. He's the one that's going to get them closest. So, just got some insight from our analyst. He's to inform me that uh, Camilla is actually a city in Bangladesh. And that's not where the Camilla Warriors are from. They actually 
are from London. They play their last men's dance cricket in Millwall Park in London, but with the uh, roots back home in in Bangladesh. And uh, so this is a uh, no matter what happens today, uh, we're going to have a Bangladesh winner. Striking, uh, deaf little touch there, and that that's racing away for. Oh, Lord, Lord. that will go for four, and that's exactly what we said. Whether it's uh, to the wards, the leg side, or on the offside, Pereira, he's the man. He's been 19 of eight, and uh, it's the final ball of the over. Uh, I think uh, I was Pereira, just now, now it's the time to get a little, little <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Pure Graham Pollock style. Uh, <laughs> always, uh, always a single on the Counting line. balls, yeah. <laughs> so, Islam shake again. Comes in towards Pereira. And the big man does exactly that. He's a good thinking cricketer. Yeah, he's Pereira. And he'll, uh, he'll have to strike in the new over. It's got a bit of a, it's not a full point, but a half a point for the Chris Gale lookalike with the, <laughs> the the locks coming out the back of the helmet there. And he's hit a few, like Gale. Gale. He reminds me a bit of uh, Arjuna Ranatunga. That's <laughs> more the, uh, <laughs> what I see there. Yeah. The blue and uh, yellow of Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan. World Cup winning captain. I think the dreadlocks is it maybe a, a bit of both. Ranatunga with the dreadlocks. I don't dreadlocks. think that's the dreadlocks. I what think is it? Oh, a it's a towel. It's a cloth, yeah. It's a cloth hanging out of the back. Yeah. Of okay. Do you think that's... Uh, it would be good to get a zoom in there just to clarify. I think I've got that one wrong there, but... Yeah, it's definitely uh, waving <laughs> in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, so ignore the Chris girl. There's nothing going for that. <laughs> We'll stick with uh, Arjuna. <laughs> Here we go. It's Jannatul Naim Loban. Comes in and uh, Pereira does like that little uh, dab down to third man. <laughs> Misses out on this occasion. I don't think uh, Pereira's going to see much spin. Uh, no, not, not after he's, he's made his intent on the leg he's, side. Yeah. He's dispatched <laughs> it. He'll push two there. Will he come back? Take the field on. Ah, didn't see Arj didn't see Ranatunga run many twos in his career. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be tough if he does become the last man standing, that's for sure. Yeah, he'll have to be dealing with, with in boundaries. boundaries. Yeah. I think the target is uh, officially out of reach yeah. now at 84-28. No. I think it's a case of trying to get up to to avoid the bonus point. That's a good shot out there. But a double team by the uh, Dhaka Warriors out in the, uh, in the deep. Yeah, the angles are so good. Just, you know, both fielders actually could have stopped that. So I bowl into a plan and I've got a the more I've watched the, the Warriors, yeah, the more I fancy them going deep in the tournament. The Daco Warriors, that is. What happens once you are not, once you lose all your your group games? Is, is there some more cricket for you yes, for the yeah, rest of the week? Yes, played competition. So that's the, the teams that um, don't um, make it into the top two, they go into the plate. And you bear in mind the teams have travelled all over the world to make it to play at the wonderful Western Province Club is, uh, and under the table mountain so they just want to play as much cricket as possible so we've made sure that all teams are guaranteed at least four games um, some teams would even be guaranteed five if they even lose the first round of the plates and they want to play in the bowl competition is an option for that some guys some teams came out here to win it and others came out here knowing that they might be in the bowl and that's what last man stands is about Yes, this is the pinnacle event, and you're going to have some teams that are going to outmatch others, but the spirit and the, 
the community of last man stands is as we see here just played out to mid wicket that's something that um, everyone involved in last man stands always is more proud of than necessarily the, the standard of cricket But uh, the standard has been high so far in this tournament, and I don't know what you think, sir, but there's been some good cricketers on display. 100%. I've uh, been uh, very impressed by a couple. Um, Owen Amit comes to mind in that uh, first game. And i uh, been impressed by the amount of spinners that have been and the quality of spin that has been on show, whether it's uh, right arm off spin, left arm or leg break bowlers. It's been really good. And a few powerful eaters just managing uh, to get a squeeze it underneath the bat. Otherwise, uh, Tunuk Tonu could have been in business there. But in general, Cape Town's a good good place for spinners, isn't it? The wind conditions and... Definitely. Uh, I think if you look go all the way back to Dennis Hobson, Omar Henry and uh, all of those guys, it's always been a place where the wind does play a role. Also, the surfaces uh, do tend to... I think uh, the first couple of days you'll see the seamers. Uh, oh, the drop geez, this was a sharp chance. Yeah, it's uh, hard, harsh to call it a drop <laughs> catch. That would have been an absolute blinder, but it'd be great to see a replay of that because he's that's come back at him very quickly and he's got that left hand and I think he's probably saved at least uh, two runs there. Boy, I'm really going to give you a shot at you. The uh, that's uh, he struck down. If you look at Daniel Pereira and we get a close-up, I'm 100% convinced he's got a Sri Lankan helmet on his head. <laughs> uh, that, I, I do see the lion there on the the navy blue, and uh, he's making that claim uh, stronger by the minute. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards uh, that as well. And he's a Sri Lankan helmet, and uh, with a surname as Pereira, there's every likelihood that his origin is uh, back in Colombo. Yes, I think... Must have been the founder of some of these teams that Last Man Stands go back 10, 11 years. And the guy that started the team, maybe he's no longer even around. And sometimes they don't even know how they've got a team name. But they've kept it and someone else has taken over the, the helm. And it's not Some of them are formal cricket clubs, but the, a lot of the teams in Bangladesh would, would consider themselves formal cricket clubs. But some of the teams are social teams that are put together. Um, but... Camilla, as we heard earlier, is a town in... I um, always thought it was the uh, Princess Charles's wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's what <Yeah>. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we uh, are watching a bit of that on the on good old Netflix at the moment with uh, Harry and Meghan's documentary. Are you a royalist? I think I, w I, would, uh, I would claim to be. <laughs> <laughs> I would claim to be. But more uh, anti-establishment, to be honest. Okay. Um, in the camp of Harry, Meghan, Diana, okay. or that side. <laughs> I stay it. clear of it. <laughs> yeah, just uh, grew up with a grandmother who absolutely adored them. Absolutely. Uh, royal weddings were occasions in the household. It was the <laughs> only thing you watched on the television all day. <laughs> so, yeah. But back to the cricket... Uh, Pereira, he's uh, eyeing the short boundary again. And I think uh, just beaten in the flat end, but a turn there by Tonu. The Andrew has come up for the Camilla Warriors. I think it's been a good batting effort by them. It's just uh, the fact that they are chasing a mammoth 179. Yeah, the Poland department was maybe not of the same class as the, the Dakar Warriors. Just a bit early on that one. Still should get a couple. These two, not the two quickest between the wickets. But they've done the job. But I don't think there'll be a two of the next ball. <laughs> it's always this next two that's the problem. <laughs> not the first two. Right? It's the yeah. next two that's yeah. the problem. And don't ask if you run three in a row. There's definitely a hand going up. Yeah, yeah, no, the the, the non-striker made his intention very clear. He just one step, two steps, and then half a jog.
So this is the penultimate game of the day on the Wally Wilson main field here. Just that thought to me, bowled it went a bit quicker there, Tunuk Tonu. Pereira on strike again. Goes deep into his crease. And uh, just misses out. So, um, the last game of the day, the world one, number one team, Asagami. Uh, very big squad, led by Dan Stone, the team manager. They've been going through all their warm-up routines. They'll be up against the New York Thunderbolts, who are obviously from New York. You see... Uh, Outside edge, and that runs away for four. So Pereira playing a lone hand here for Camilla Warriors in terms of strike rate. Perhaps they would think he maybe should have come in a bit earlier. But uh, the Masagami from Johannesburg, uh, they are clear favourites for this tournament. And uh, they'll be heavily backed in the last game against the New York Thunderbolts. Swipe out towards the leg side. Hasn't made a clean contact. Does seem that he enjoys the slower bowlers a little bit more. Than yeah. The yeah. He also seems to favour the leg side as well. So. Oof. That was that was reminiscent of uh, Slinger Malinga. <laughs> yeah. That was a bone uh, toe crushing Yorker there. But he's managed to keep it out as. Uh, Fire it big as we come to the end of the over. Single down to the uh, cover boundary. Hmm. Spirit on strike. That one he'll pick up. He hasn't got it uh, cleanly though. And he'll trot through for a single. So we're just talking about Masagami. They've got a big squad. They, uh, they've they all uh, gathered there at deep mid-wicket. They'll have watched this game. You can see there. That should be taken in the deep. And that's comfortably taken there by the uh, Dhaka Warriors. He made good ground and was never in doubt. A neat little catch uh, for the Dhaka Warriors. As the Camilla Warriors, they... Uh, Lose another as this game uh, drifts towards uh, an inevitable victory for the boys from Bangladesh. It's a splendid catch there by the uh, long one. We say goodbye to Wayne for a, for a short bit, but I'll, uh, I'll take you home for the with uh, Dhaka Warriors looking to be the... Uh, the victors, yeah. Well, that's uh, taken off there, off the uh, the rough. As I welcome back, uh, Rosh, we. Uh, Back into the commentary box. It looks so, like a comfortable victory here for the Dhaka Warriors. Uh, unfortunately, the scoreboard just uh, not updating at the moment. Uh, but uh, 
So how many others to go? Oh. Have it? No. The Dakar Warriors, uh, they'll uh, close it out fairly shortly. Pereira, he's played well, the big left-hander. As I was telling uh, Wayne earlier, reminds me of Arjuna Ratunga. <laughs> does uh, have that uh, look about him. And he does fancy the leg side. So it looks like this is the final two overs. Camilla Warriors, their chances of finishing in the, for the cup competition are been dashed it's fast evaporating yeah yeah two losses at the wally watson oval gonna see them through oh he's bowled him <laughs> it's a big swing and a big miss not real much of a celebration here from the Dakar Warriors. They look like they're keen just to get off the field here. That was absolutely no celebration here. There's but this Dakar Warriors does look like a, a well-oiled machine. They're going to definitely be up there come, find, come the knockouts, the last 16. Have every department covered, some good bowlers, good batters. So swinging a miss there as you look at that replay. <clears throat> so last sixteen scheduled for Thursday, quarterfinals Friday, and the big finals day on Sunday. The new batter in takes guard. You know, fighting a bit of a, a lost cause. Well, it's good. The Dakar it's Warriors have been uh, good from the outset. Uh, Ross, they uh, posted the highest total on the ground this week. Yep. And uh, the Camilla Warriors do get a boundary there, but uh, it's all a bit uh, in a lost cause at the moment. Yep. And to get 180 on this wicket, uh, you know, it's a gap is always going to put the uh, English team under under pressure. And they've uh, just stuck to their disciplines. They haven't done anything uh, out of the ordinary. Stuck to the disciplines and uh, close out the victory. Well, uh, another wicket there for the bowler. Turns it back to his mark. It's as if he's just bowled a ball and he's getting back to his mark. He's not interested in anything but any celebrations. The Camilla Warriors are just swinging hard. They've also seemed like they've had enough of this game. Or just want to. I suppose they have to swing hard. There's no point in hanging around, blocking it out. Just hit a few, come off, maybe bring the run rate down a bit. But it's, it's, a, it's a slinger malinger action, that. It's uh, definitely uh, you miss, I hit. And uh, top of off, that's where you want to be, be aiming. So... Raf's hand comes into bat. He was the right time off spinner. Be interesting to see what tactic he, he employs there. If he's going to swing hard or just try to bat up the overs, have a bit of a net. I've, I've been accustomed to be in these situations a bit and frustrate the bowlers and get myself a little nod out. Oh, big peel. Tulani has that thing. I think it's an inside edge there that he's uh, managed. He shows the, the batter showing yeah, the bat. Showing, showing the bat. Yeah. Classic. How many times do you see that when he's actually been given out? He always <laughs> shows the bat. This has been another great day here. Day three of the World Champs here in Cape Town. And heading towards the business end of the season. Oh, big swing in it. Hit there, he's hit it out too. It's a great catch there on Calcutta boundary. That is a fantastic catch. That is directly into the sun. And he's got to judge the wind. And initially, and that's been a hallmark of the Dhaka Warriors. They've caught really well. And uh, it looks like they are calling the innings. There won't be a last man who will bat by himself. 
And that is the end of the game. Well done uh, to the Deca Warriors. It's a two from two. That'll see them into the last 16. And that's the end of game three here at the Western Forest Cricket Club. So, Camilla Warriors end up on 121. We'll see you shortly for the fourth game, which is Masagami against the New York Thunderbolts. See you soon.